Welcome back. We will continue with the discussion on the issue of whether the department, it is time now that the revenue board should go for independent, you know, the rank of adjudicators to perhaps, you know, to, to dilute the dependencies of cases and also to give much more fair and merit based order. So, do you think uh, it will help to a large uh, extent? Definitely, it would help, and uh, also some element of uh, bringing in other jurisdictions what they have. They can use this Stark reports as a basis. I have always, you know, tried to think about the real part of the cure portion. See, we would, we can even talk about the prevention portion through an ARA or through an APA. But on the cure portion, if you look at our current element of uh, of element of of, of routes available. In the settlement commission under the direct or the settlement commission under the indirect, there is an admission. First, you have to make an admission. I have not, I have not filed my income. There is no scope for a person who has a genuine difference of opinion, a genuine entity, a genuine assessee who has a genuine difference of opinion with the revenue to have an alternate dispute resolution. So it could be a domestic issue, it can be any other issue. Mm -hmm. Now, the larger issue would be is maybe we can look at nearby jurisdictions. I think I am a great fan of Bangladesh these days and I find that that dispute resolution you will find in the code the word negotiation is used many number of times. Recently Nepal has come up with the settlement commission. It's, it's got a validity I agree but they've looked at a concept of negotiation. So everywhere you don't have to bunch everybody with the element of guilt. There are people who there are assessees who have genuine differences of opinion on an issue. So what about them? What about that portion of the population, which will be a major portion of the population than the people who are generally who are entitled to only these kind of cases before the settlement commission? That's a larger question. So, sir, should. I mean, what, what has been your experience of this? So far as this alternative dispute resolution mechanism is concerned, the four major components of uh, arbitration, conciliation, <coughs> mediation and negotiation. So, how do you look at, sir? This, because some of them are, of course, uh, completely no for our you tax see, system in India. Taxes, because, you know, the mindset or the thought process from what I know is that arbitration, this is a tax collection is a sovereign function. So, whether you can go in for arbitration or not, that's a very big issue. Number two, when you talk about People who will decide whether an appeal should be filed against a particular, uh, what do you call, order or a particular appellate order to have an independent body. The question again would be, what is going to constitute that independent, who are going to constitute rather that independent body. Uh, so the who becomes very important and uh, to my mind, uh, it would work under a similar kind of... Uh, watch as if it is like the CNAG for the tax officer, it would be the public and the tax department, we should be watching this body. Every time it takes a decision, it may be suspect one way or the other. So, you know, I, I don't know how in our milieu that would function because in the US and some other countries, they have a ruling system, rulings. So, they have a body which questions are asked, the questions are raised before them and they give a ruling which is not a binding, uh, it doesn't have a binding. We have the authority for advanced ruling for that purpose and they give a, it's an open court hearing and the decision may or may not be transmitted to the media or to any tax report or anything if the taxpayer doesn't want it. So, there is a system of advanced ruling there but the advanced rulings are taking to too long, one in the constitution of the members and the chairman who have to uh, give out the decisions. That takes every time one member retires, it takes seven to eight months. By the time he settles in, it takes another two months. So for ten, nearly ten months, nothing happens okay. with the AR. So the cases keep piling up and we have had different processes which have evolved over time with the AR. And that process is that first I was must admit it and then I must decide it on merits. The, from what I understand, the present dispensation in the AAR, the members, the, the chairman, they feel that, okay, I have admitted it. No, why don't we get on with the merits right now? But it's not possible because the people have not, the uh, applicant has not come prepared and revenue also may not be prepared to argue that case on that date. 
so you know everything gets pushed but so do you think that you know this uh, the recent episode of luxembourg this this overall doctrine of ruling which is so well respected in some of the countries it its credibility has been eroded where particularly third world no, countries say that uh, for example i think i can lightly contrast this see let's let's i agree with mr uh, mr mathur's view that whether this is fitting our milieu is a very 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 credible point because taxing is a sovereign right now we have a neighbor called sri lanka in sri lanka the code i don't i remember because we are operating there we, i don't remember to have seen anything directly on negotiation but in the process of assessment you have an issue they have an inbuilt negotiation that fits into the assessment orders okay so there is an element of give and take in the system there so something other somewhere or the other see it's what are the purpose of so of, that that is a pre dispute what is consultation the is of, negotiation of, of because that, that is stage yeah, we need to reduce easy. disputes mm -hmm. then we must find a combination of measures you can't expect only ara to take the load and the apa to take the load what about the right. people who come at the cure stage yes. the cure stage also people would have to look at the cure so maybe yeah. the base of the ssc officers are functioning yeah. today see uh, uh, shailendra the point here is today if you see a transfer pricing officer he handles 130 cases that too he starts sometime in august and ends up in december within that period even i cannot do a justice to my own company's uh, transfer pricing study if i do it end to end and come out with the uh, segregation and comparability analysis and do a 100% thorough job so given that for one company where i have been sitting all through the year running through and watching that transactions i am not in a position to do justice you, you can't expect a transfer pricing officer so, to sit on 130 and right. make a judgment so that's where actually dr shom has uh, clearly pointed out the pre consultation right. what that means is we can hire experts from the corporates or from other fraternity where they have a professional knowledge on that subject or they have done research on that subject they they are um, uh, economist Uh, who are there in the market who are available on a engagement basis where they will be allocated some 20 30 files and they will study and help the transfer pricing officer to get into that level of maturity which he ought to have when he is passing the order so by just uh, uh, having a transfer pricing study which is more a cut and paste of mine for last 10 years which is a bound volume of 1000 1500 pages practically it is inhuman to ask him to do that and it's not possible also by anyone except god oh to a large extent he is right sir in fact i mean a lot of good officers they don't get the kind of support and sometimes very able support you know the junior in fact now now the the <laughs> government has already uh, uh, given powers to the uh, uh, dgs uh, director generals to take uh, people from outside on expert opinion basis and then do that but it's not really operational because of uh, once again as uh, mr mathur said the mindset and to what extent they will help us will the information go will that go in favor of taxpayer vis a vis tax administration these type of questions keep coming is that person a credible person so these type of questions keep coming so that's where actually even dr shom said psychological training for the officers is also important to what extent you have to rely upon to 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 what extent you should be dependent on see we do engage lot of consultants for our uh, very confidential projects which we cannot even disclose in the public domain right. we do consult so what we consult is x y z right. without naming anything we give a structure around it and get an opinion so that's what we do so same way government also can do it need not go and hand over the 20 files and then ask them to give a report on that it's not a litigation where you engage a lawyer and ask him to present uh, your case it's more an opinion to some extent to add to that that uh, taking on experts has now figured in the gar in the provisions of gar yes. they have accepted this accepted. position government has accepted right. that we will have the some consultant, consultant yeah. and Correct. suppose he is a leather expert then yeah. he will tell us how much yeah. can be got like this or whatever right. industry right. is required to be looked at but so far as transfer pricing is concerned the bigger cases now 
may be going for uh, the APA. The only problem with APA is now that we are now in the second year of it and we have now 450 to 500 cases as I understand which are pending. Yes. Till date probably 5 plus 1, 6 cases have been disposed of. Right. So that is a, <laughs> in the Terrible first year story, I can yes. understand, maybe 10, 15, but now APA has to catch on. So why is APA not being able to deliver? You know, it's unilateral, the bilaterals have also opened up with the US. Right. So why is it not going ahead? And I think largely it is more an administrative issue to the APA again, because the, ultimately the board has to approve the agreement. So what is the view of the board with regard to, uh, say, the uh, advertising and uh, sales promotion, etc., expenditure, AMP expenses. So there are some what is the things we can do inside the milieu also? Right. Sir. Uh, one more thing which we can think of is that let's say there is an SSE who has got consistently on the direct side, he's only a domestic uh, tax issue. He's got consistent additions. So let's say of a cutoff limit as fixed by the board in relation to different categories of groups of come of uh, industries cutting off of the of the cutoff level and it is consistently happened for three years and they find that it is happening every year then they can the department can appoint a facilitator in these kind of cases mm -hmm. as we call peer board review right peer board review yeah. peer board review can be can be inside the department mm -hmm. as i'm trying to bridge what mr mathur said Correct. and but that's what is being is, done yeah. this year peer board yeah. review you take a peer board review and see whether it is genuine. Now, as a result of doing this, what are you doing? You're doing, you're doing to help the SSC. The fourth year may be a better year than the first three years. Right. So if you see these things, maybe you don't have to do. You don't have to substantially change the act. You do not have to. You right. don't have to find whether the taxing rights are compromised. Mm -hmm. So many things you can do inside the latitude that is available to us. Absolutely. Then, sir, you know. Then we have sort of uh, dozens and dozens of Supreme Court, High Court, you know, settling a lot of legal point, law points. And maybe the board should quickly take a view if certain points are acceptable to the board. They should come up quickly with the instructions, etc. So that a lot of disputes can be, you know, stopped at the lower level itself. Yeah, actually, you know, this is very important point and I think Mr. Mathur also touched upon this. And which happens in various other countries that on, there are regular guidelines being issued by the uh, no, by the board or the uh, top body which doesn't happen so frequently in our country so if you there is an issue or indirect tax side or on the direct tax side how frequently we issue guidelines uh, taking the practical uh, no, business examples in mind and advising uh, the tax administration that this is in such kind of a situation that's the uh, right course of interpretation or right course of action to be taken we don't do that so I think that's one big area where uh, uh, I think government should pitch in and the board should be much so more proactive. proactive. Yeah. Well, the only point is you don't have to interfere in the power, as Sant correctly said, in the power of a commissioner appeals. You are not allowed to do so. The law right. prohibits you to do so. Right. But at the same time, where there are issues, there is no simple gain in saying you obey a jurisdictional high court decision once in four years and issue a circular. But then can we find ways and means to ensure that this is also done? Practically, so the, the uh, bigger question I would go one step above and say even if CBEC or CBDT issues a circular, whether the field formation adhere to that? Should they adhere to that? Are they adhering to that? that I think I think are they adhering is more important. <laughs> yes. So, so, so <laughs> actually, if we cut so, across and try to find a common thread in my mind, uh, why? our tax administration is risk covers. They are terribly risk covers. They don't want to take any yeah. risk. So what is the reason for that? And uh, uh, I think, should we not have disincentive for having frivolous litigation? If you are able to you know, tackle these structurally, then I think all these suggestions will fall in place. I think all yeah. the Absolutely. dispute uh, resolution mechanism that are there, either at the commission appeal level or you know, whatever mechanism is there, I think that will fall in place. That, will de that should deliver uh, the way it is ad intended to deliver. So I think structurally we need to find a solution. In this, in this, uh, you know, when you say structurally, uh, starting at the base, which cases are you going to pick for scrutiny? Yes. So we have the risk base. The risk base. So the department has set up an office of DG risk assessment. So I think today that is the most important office 
it has to decide and it is done all information gathered electronically it's put up and then you make an assessment as to which are the cases which will give you maximum amount of evasion if there is any yeah. so those cases are picked up for scrutiny not that you pick up cases every year on ad hoc suppose it is capital gains of more than 25 lakhs so you will take it up for assessment Correct. if it is uh, loss of uh, so much then you must pick it up for scrutiny those may not be the cases which Absolutely. may be giving the department the best that they can hope to get from a case so once you do at the base level first decide on to which cases you do after a risk assessment has been made second is then the assessing officer has to be given that detail as to on what basis this was picked so he knows what to chase up and look for right but uh, why not why not larger issues at least at the ltu stage for example ltus have not taken off well with the intention with which they were started why not have risk protocol signed for a corporate or uh, an entity having so much of accessible income or clearing so much of goods or pay or delivering so much of services so why not have a risk protocol the risk protocol can be revisited once in 3 years and that framework of risk protocol should have a direct and an indirect side once it is signed and sealed it's not it's not affecting the the sovereign right to tax so it's it's a risk protocol based on which the government will conduct itself vis-a-vis that enterprise no, or that no this is a very pertinent point again uh, in terms of uh, uh, the action one can take um the ap authority the method that they follow to understand an applicant Absolutely. there are 400 applications the method they follow there is a list of questionnaire they ask very intelligent questions you submit the answer they'll ask for a site visit they'll come once or twice have interviews with the ceo cfo and the other important uh, the management key management personnel they develop understanding of the business see you tax i think we we talk about tax but tax is on what ultimately it's on business yes. Yes, sir. You know, if you have excise duty, it's a tax on manufacture. So one should understand what I'm manufacturing. What is my process of manufacturing? Right. If income tax is a tax on income, oh, this is nothing but a summary of earnings and the expenses on you know on the, the P&L. Yes. So how much time we give our tax administration to understand businesses? If we spend some more I time, think, I think this is the most important what, thing yeah. that yes. you have what, touched absolutely. upon. Absolutely, absolutely. And this most is important. and I th- I believe now. for many because you know you can teach tax law you can teach tax rules but until you know how a business actually functions tax is on a situation so they have now tax. started in nagpur which is the in the direct tax side we have the academy in nagpur they have started a course for the last 4 to 5 years on business studies for the for the first time so which is a very big very big thing and i think maybe some good comes out of it actually you know just to off the cuff I have one of my assessing officer in LTU. I have a company in LTU, Bangalore. So there is a joint commissioner there. Uh, he came from, so he's 12 years experience uh, post his uh, IRS. Uh, he was sent for uh, a one-year course in IM, uh, Indore. Oh, okay. And I think this was a program which I think yeah, the mid career program. Which in 2010 some programs were started. And uh, when I met this guy, when he came from there, it was uh, it was a fantastic experience interacting with him. Mm. And it was uh, no, it was. very happy experience worth interact and the manner in which he handled the assessment was yes. i was thrilled i was thrilled Absolutely. i thought would be am i in the same country <laughs> before yeah. the same because they are, they are getting exposed people are to going some of the international people practices. are going yes. abroad is really helping them yes uh, yeah people are going abroad so i 40, i know 40 to 50 people are going i know sir the next batch is going in july now currently we learned the business only at the supreme court correct if you see the the judgment supreme court delivers read that uh, 500 page judgment you will get to know what the business is doing what ha- it has been doing and why it was caught uh, what was the situation under which it was caught whether is that legitimate is there any way which could have avoided it so all these are deliberated only in the supreme court judgment not below that so see? business is learned there only <laughs> see this is very unfortunate part we forget that tax is on a given set of facts and uh, there is a huge you no know, it's a divorce between these two situations the so tax administration whatever you no know, unmindfully yeah. they just follow a track uh, without knowing what the business is doing what the company is doing 
Absolutely. That is why there is a lot of emphasis. Sir, in but this if you do a risk matter. protocol, what he says will happen. Mm -hmm. Will happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. You do exactly. a risk protocol. All yeah. this, what he, what the APA is doing, even normal people would do. Your your local domestic tax assessment officers will be doing. In fact, no. Just to share with you, just maybe extending this point, when we internally assess a situation, and uh, and we, when we uh, you know, update our top management on a tax situation. The kind of fi uh, fact finding we do internally within our company, where we are working for ten years, it takes a lot of time. It does, absolutely. We will take a short break, and after the break, we will touch upon substantive uh, recommendations made by Dr. Parsathi Shoma.